let's talk about pumps and all that water pumping around many of our buildings. So there are two different types of pumping systems. In complex systems, we have pumps delivering chilled water and heating water throughout the building. We also have smaller pumping systems related to domestic hot water so that when you go up to the tap in a building, you get hot water even if you're far away from the uh, source of the water heat. So let's talk about that first case of domestic hot water. In this type of system, it's interesting that the heat lost from the piping that runs throughout the building can be significantly greater than the heat lost from the tank. As a result, uh, the old code required time control of the recirculation pump so that at least after hours that uh, pump was shut off. Again, the primary savings here is not so much the pump energy, as these pumps are pretty small. It's the heat loss from all that pipe throughout the building. The newer controls that are now available uh, are required in the new code language. First of all, we look for a flow switch in the cold water pipe. So this flow switch uh, should basically turn that pump off unless we sense a demand for hot water. And then once that sense for uh, hot water demand occurs, uh, the pump will come on, delivering water quickly to the person who needs it. The Aquastat requirement allows the pump to be turned off and save pump energy once the system is warmed up and it doesn't need to continue. Now there's an exception on these more sophisticated controls uh, under 100,000 BTUs per hour, which is about 29 kilowatts. So for very small systems, uh, this control wouldn't be required. Let's move on to the heating and water uh, hydronic systems found in complex systems. So first of all, there's a reduction in the requirement for variable speed drives on pumps. It went from 10 horsepower down to 5 horsepower. That means any pump uh, 5 horsepower and larger should have a variable speed drive on it. There's also a requirement for variable flow. This is a new requirement. The old requirement had this variable speed drive required when there was variable flow. The new requirement says you shall have variable flow um, whenever you've got a system larger than 300,000 BTU per hour. This is typically 25 tons of cooling or about uh, 60 gallons per minute on a heating water pump. Then there's a requirement for a multiple speed, variable speed drive, or multiple pumps. Uh, and this system, you can tell as far as compliance, it's mostly going to have two-way valves. So if you see a system where all the valves are three-way valves, uh, that is probably not a compliant system unless it's smaller than these limits. There's uh, multiple results here. Even without a variable speed drive or multiple multiple uh, speed pumps and the smaller ones don't require that, two-way valves will reduce the flow and reduce the energy use by that pump. Air-cooled chillers are now restricted in use. Water-cooled ch chillers are much more efficient as they use the evaporative effect of water to uh, cool the uh, condenser water that's going through the system. So basically, Chilled water plants with more than 300 tons of total capacity limit the amount of air-cooled chillers to 100 tons. Often they do want a smaller chiller there as a backup unit. However, uh, it's interesting here, at 301 tons, that requirement exists. Up to 300 tons, it's possible to have a total of 300 tons of air-cooled chillers. Just the way that requirement is written, that's how it works out. Cooling tower flow turndown. Now the basic idea here is this doesn't apply when you've got a single tower with a single cell. But if you've got multiple towers, as we see here, there are two towers, or you've got a single tower with multiple cells, meaning multiple fans, there's a requirement that instead of sh just shutting one tower off, we require that multiple towers run at part load. This reduces the fan energy use with proper controls and significantly saves energy. Basically, uh, the towers need to be operated in parallel with a turndown flow 
to the largest of the smallest pump or 50% of the total tower design flow. Again, the purpose here is to save the fan energy use on the tower. And there are some requirements to meet this that some care be taken in tower selection. Chiller heat recovery is required. Again, this is a new requirement on larger systems. This is above 6 million BTUs per hour. That's a chilled water plant of about 400 tons, depending upon the efficiency. And with a uh, combined domestic hot water and reheat load greater than a million BTUs per hour. So this in this situation, there's a requirement that half of the domestic hot water load and 10% of the reheat load be met by recovered heat from the chiller. The outcome here is that instead of throwing that heat away at the cooling tower, we're going to recover it and reduce our energy use at the boiler.